Okay, so this is the 2017 sorghum patch. It's been growing sorghum now for about nine or ten years. I started out with the variety Dale, and I know that I sourced that from Bountiful Gardens. And Dale is sort of a dual purpose grain syrup type sorghum. It's a very tall sorghum, but the seeds are red and they are not so bitter that you can't use it for grain. I've seen it called the pancake plant because you can make your pancakes and the syrup from the same plant. Several years back, maybe three years back, I got a variety called Texacoa from Sandhill Seeds, which is a dwarf white seeded grain type one, which only gets about three feet tall. The Texacoa is a great variety. It's far less prone to fall over. Um, it's more productive just in general. The same square footage is going to give you a lot more grain. Uh, and it's got a nice white seed, a slightly larger seed, and a bigger seed head. Uh, the dale does hold up pretty well. The tall type sorghum certainly hold up better than tall corn, but they still can be knocked down. Uh, this sorghum here has been frosted and beaten up by high winds and storms, and it's still basically standing up. It's starting to be chewed on by deer and by birds a little bit, so I need to get it harvested here. I could have harvested it earlier. In any case, this plot is interesting because I had read that sorghum basically doesn't cross very readily, that it's like this other small grains, like wheats and barley and such. Um, and over growing it out for several years, I didn't see a lot of crosses, but last year I saw a plant that was an obvious cross uh, between Texacoa and Dale and I saved seeds from that and planted it out and as expected this would be the F2 and I see all kinds of traits here. I see tall plants with white seeds and I see short plants with red seeds and everything in between. I wanted to grow these just to see if there'd be something interesting worth selecting out of it and to try to get more familiarity with how sorghum genetics work and how the breeding works. What I can say is that the taller plants seem to be mostly dominant. The seed color seems to be about 50-50, but the only really interesting thing that I saw in this whole plot, there's one plant here that is a red seeded full dwarf type plant so I might save seed from this one and work forward from that one this one seems like something interesting if it's a tall red seeded one I don't see the sense in it honestly because then it's just like Dale and if it's a short white seeded one then it's just like Texacoa the tall white seeded ones are kind of interesting but I don't know that I'd bother with any of those like there's a really tall white one at the end for a sense of the height of these the tallest ones are probably about 10 feet high and this bed was not heavily fertilized uh, sorghum is a huge plant if you get one of these big syrup type ones the stalks of sorghum can be cut and peeled and eaten like sugarcane and they're extremely sweet they're pressed and then juice boiled down to make sorghum syrup which is similar to molasses and the seeds can be popped like popcorn they're really easily ground into a fairly decent flour they're much easier to grind than say flint corn or dent corn but not maybe not as easy to grind as flour corn but it makes a decent flour and some of the references you see online have specific varieties of popping sorghum any of the sorghums will pop fine. So I don't know if the popping ones pop bigger or better, but the two varieties that I've grown both pop and they both pop fine. Another interesting use for sorghum is you can make beer from sorghum. Uh, corn, you can't really malt corn properly uh, for the beer making process, but sorghum can be malted properly and is actually a really nice uh, beer making grain if barley doesn't work well in your area and I've struggled with barley for a lot of reasons. I've got a few successful crops of barley over the years but 
I can get a successful crop of sorghum every year, no matter what the situation, no matter what the weather. So uh, it's way more productive. Sorghum is native to Africa. It's related to corn. It's a C4 grass. So it's really tolerant of heat and drought. And it's a good tough plant in general. It's actually a real solid plant for homesteaders or anyone who's trying to look at self-sufficiency kind of things. It's uh, at least as good as corn, if not in some way superior to corn actually. The whole plant makes excellent livestock feed. The last couple of years when I've had pigs, I'd feed everything to the pigs and they really like it. I think it's a good fattening thing for pigs. So that's the 2017 sorghum. Oh, threshing these things is really easy. All you have to do, when I harvest these things, I cut the seed heads and I hang them upside down to dry in the barn until I get a chance to thresh them. And then all I do is bang them around inside of a steel barrel or a steel trash can. The seeds fall right out of the seed heads. And there's no cleaning to any extent after that. Um, they're really simple. You can also cook them like rice. They take a little longer than rice and you need to add a little more water, but they can be cooked as a whole grain like rice as well. So they don't even need to be ground actually to be usable. It's a good usable plant. Also really nice for poultry feed. Since they're so easy to thresh and really technically you don't even have to thresh them. You can cut the seed heads and give them the poultry as is and it's a good feed. So a lot of good characteristics. The bad characteristic is that the seeds are very attractive to birds and wide open to birds and the birds are starting to get in here and eat them. So as I said before, I really need to get them cut now. This is the total sorghum harvest for 2017. It's been bundled and is ready to hang up to finish drying. There are some interesting things I've noticed here. I did separate out these by color. So these on the right are a darker color. And this is fairly close to what Dale is typically like, although the strain of Dale that I've had, there is variability in the seed color from more of a dark red to almost a white, but typically the bulk of them are this medium color here. Probably the majority of the seed, just slightly, is this intermediate color and form seed where there's sort of a buffy tan and the least amount were these more or less white and this is the color of Texacoa although it isn't quite the size and the shape of the seed head but you can clearly see the intermediary between the two So I would say actually after having watched these grow out, the intermediate was actually the majority numerically, followed by the red and then this white, the least, which would lead me to think that the white is very recessive, that the red is semi-dominant, but the white's not fully recessive. At least that's what I would have to guess based on the results that I got here. This is a pretty respectable yield. This was 25 foot double row or a 50 foot single row. If you care to look at it that way and probably about 50 plants. Sorghum is higher yielding than any of your small grains, your rye, your wheat, your oats, barley for sure. I'm not sure if it outperforms corn under ideal circumstances, but I would think that under less than ideal circumstances it certainly outperforms corn the deer don't bother this anything like as bad as they bother corn for me and disease is essentially a non-issue at least any meaningful level of disease insects are essentially a non-issue stands much more drought and much more heat much more cold much more wet than corn does the downsides to it is that it's not as culturally significant to people. It's harder to use it in cooking, just in the sense that corn is well known, well understood. There's lots of recipes available for corn and people are used to eating corn. 
corn honestly tastes a little better. This doesn't taste bad. It's just very bland. Um, but sorghum is probably a tougher, hardier plant all around. And it does have the benefit that you know you can put one seed in the ground and you're going to get one of these big heads here that has hundreds of seeds on it. Now, of course, that's similar for corn, but that's way better than you know, your wheat or your barley or your oats, which are pretty paltry in terms of their return on investment. And plus there's the fact that you can make syrup out of sorghum as well and popcorn. So it's a pretty good useful plant. And that is essentially the sorghum harvest for 2017.